Good evening, everyone. Time for another member update. So we're going to have to start out with the Bitcoin chart here. You can see Bitfinex hit a high just a few minutes, well, a little over an hour ago of 4099. Yes, that's right. $4,099 per Bitcoin. That's up from 3700 just back on the 17th. So an incredible run. You can see on the long term another parabolic spike of uh, where is it going to go who knows is 10,000 out of the question no not really not out of the question uh, so really wild ride let's jump over to silver um, it's kind of looking a little bit bottomy here as we ticked up above $17 uh, again super super cheap in the long-term view of things back to the five minute chart so we're kind of fighting with these smackdowns if we pull out to the hour you can see we had a, a recent one here but nothing like the the ones we had here and there was the one before that uh, about a week or so before that um, so silver's trying to recover of course as I said anything about anything below really 18 bucks is a steal anything below twenty dollars is uh, just continue to stack because uh, you're clearly buying an asset that's undervalued and if you just think we're gonna look at a story here Martin Armstrong talking about what's going on in Australia which is happening across the West but if you think about you know the fundamental situation of the Western governments in the state that they're in which is nearing bankruptcy basically uh, you know to think about what the cryptocurrencies are doing uh, in the face of that and then to think about what the precious metals are not doing uh, precious metals being a better store of wealth than cryptocurrencies simply because of the stability of the many many thousands of years that they have successfully outlasted various governments empires kings and corrupt politicians so gold and silver definitely being the better long-term store of value to protect yourself against corrupt governments at the same time cryptocurrencies are emerging now as an important part also of the picture of how to protect yourself from corrupt governments and th I think the governments know they're in trouble they're on the run it's almost like a last gasp and we'll see that when we look at this story from Australia but I want to take you to Poloniex because I'm starting to see kind of an inter interesting pattern emerge here this is a pattern that we've seen uh, for quite some time with Bitcoin when it makes new runs you can see here here's the Bitcoin dollar chart and the one thing well this is USDT but uh, huge volume spike there very interesting but one of the things that you tend to see is that uh, once the la the latest Bitcoin rally is kind of consolidating, once it's kind of working its way through the market, what you see is a kind of profit taking bleeding into the other coins. Now we were seeing that earlier this morning. Now because Bitcoin is is on another tear, it's we're not really seeing that. But what when you do see that initially is you see some of the coins starting to perk up. So two of the coins today that we're starting to perk up and anytime you have Bitcoin on an incredible tear like that and other coins up against it then you know that they're doing you know they're doing very well and you can see here that clams is one this is one that was at 0 .00 what is that three or four point oh 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 nine six and it ran all the way to point oh oh two two so it did more than doubled uh, in the last couple of days another one is storage coin it was up a very significant percentage you can see that it ran from a low here back on August 8th about 1143 all the way up to 4737 okay so that's a that's a fourfold move and that's against Bitcoin so think about that Bitcoin going over 4000 while a coin is going up fourfold against it that's what you start to see when people start to roll out of some of their Bitcoin profits because where are they going to put them are they going to put them back into dollars some do but some put them into other cryptocurrencies 
So if we look at the clam chart, for example, when we go to US World Coin Index, these are all quoted in dollars. And I like that because it gives a more fair perspective rather than being quoted in Bitcoin. First thing to look at though here is our crypto market cap. You can see here we're 138. So there we go. That's record high. That's all time high market cap. And I predicted that the last video that we would get there, we're, we're already through it. So $200 billion wouldn't surprise me. $300 billion wouldn't surprise me. I, I predicted a trillion by the end of the year could easily reach that or even surpass it with how fast these things are moving. But so if you pull up the clam chart here on WorldCoin Index, you can see when it's looked at in dollars, you can see what kind of a move that is. So starting back on the 7th, we had about three bucks. Uh, if we pull it out to the monthly, it shows you a little bit more. So it's verging on going into all time highs from a price last spring of one. So a, nearly a complete recovery in just that one coin. The other coin we were looking at was storage and uh, that also started to have now now it's down 22 percent so it's it's uh, retracing some of that move but you can see that uh, back on august 8th this coin was 0.4 and it ran all the way to 1.6 uh, if we go out to the say the three month you can see it's doing a similar thing to um, the other coin in that uh, it it started its run in in the spring it ran up and, and peaked there in the May June period and now uh, with a little bit of uptick in its price and then with the huge uptick in Bitcoin it's catching back up so you're gonna want to keep an eye on some of these coins here you want to keep your eye on the ones that are at the top of the list I also like to keep an eye on the ones that are at the bottom of the list here Stratus and Stellar are absolutely getting killed uh, I think Stellar at some point will probably get a big bounce. This volume here seems to indicate that it's it may the selling may be overdone. So those are some to watch, but the first ones to come up are going to be the ones that are kind of holding their own against Bitcoin. As it stands right now, we really don't have anything uh, holding its own except Nexium and Clams are the only two that are in the positive. Steam, maybe one of those. You can see here, though, here's the warning. Uh, the infamous Poloniex warning that's on so many coins. And by the way, uh, I think I mentioned in the last video that uh, the Bytecoin team tried to contact them uh, about the warning they had. Now that's been removed. So there's some question as to these warnings on Poloniex. But... Uh, Again, I don't have any money on Poloniex right now. I have some money on some other exchanges. And if I decide to get back in, I still haven't decided if I'm going to put some on Poloniex or most of it on Bittrex. So let's go to this story of Martin Armstrong uh, talking about Australia. Martin Armstrong warns Australia is crossing the line into a totalitarian state. Behind the curtain, there seems to be no government going completely nuts, more so than Australia. They are doubling taxes on all foreigners who own property, which is a violation of international law, and then they made it a crime for a foreigner to even buy a house undisclosed. On top of all this insanity, then they are planning to strip consumers of their legal protections if they pay in cash and fail to get a receipt. If an Australian pays for anything in cash, they suspect he's hiding money. The Australian government is looking to impose penalties if a consumer pays cash and fails to get a receipt so they can end the underground economy. They're expecting to change the culture by forcing consumers to ask for a fiscal, for a fiscal receipt when paying cash for anything. Now the Australian government has moved beyond eliminating cash. They seek to punish people who pay in cash. This outrageous proposal is clearly exposing the Australian government as a leftist, goose-stepping, authoritarian regime going completely insane hunting Australians for taxes. They're even stalking children on their way to school and then check the school as to how they're being paid. This is real Hitler stuff. That's why the Swiss created numbered accounts because Hitler made it illegal for a German to have any account outside of Germany. This anti-free society the Australian government is establishing is just off the charts. They've set up a black economy task force to hunt down their own citizens. 
the Black Economy Task Force has turned its attention from the businesses to consumers they now say are part of the problem, adding that we intend to examine the merits of consumers, consumer-focused sanctions, including the loss of consumer protections, warranties, and legal rights for people who make cash payments without obtaining a valid receipt. They're out to change the entire culture of Australia because the government refuses to see itself as the spendthrift causing this entire problem. They wrote, this is not simply a matter of imposing new penalties, but part of a wider cultural change agenda. This is becoming very dangerous. Can you imagine a government stalking your children? This Gestapo agency is indeed spying on its own citizens in every aspect. Just as did the Nazi government in Germany, they've put forth 35 recommendations contained in the interim report where they're arguing the need for consumer-focused action to crack down on cash payments. Obviously, Australia turned their own people turned on their own people into a hunt for taxes. Can you imagine stalking your children is legal? What is human rights? This, this isn't very well written. Australia is hunting its own people as if it were a fox hunt. So that's Martin Armstrong's take. He's not always the, he's kind of sloppy in his writing. But uh, overall, excellent point. It Yes, the Western governments now, they're going bankrupt and they're getting desperate. And this may be what's driving Bitcoin. I don't know. Uh, I did not think we would reach 4,000 this quickly. Uh, but anything's possible. Uh, the writing is already on the wall for these governments. I'm kind of surprised that these governments are not reacting with a sort of backing off type of uh, maneuver, considering that the cryptocurrencies seem to be spreading so quickly around the world. Uh, so what does it mean? It may mean that this is they see this as the last gasp and they have to make this push now or it's, it's now or never. If that's the case, that's very, very good news because that means we don't have that much longer to wait before governments begin to collapse around the world and cryptocurrencies and precious metals uh, step into their rightful place being savings. Uh, the proper vehicle for s people saving their money and also the prop proper vehicle for people making transactions one with uh, another across borders, uh, within borders, uh, from phone to desktop, uh, just a growing uh, black market, if you want to use that term, uh, that governments hate. But I don't think there's going to be anything they can do to stop it. And we'll talk to you next time.